transition us in. Oh, buddy. It's so nice to see your faces. Right? We're back hello. with the, What's that? Hello. Hello, we're back with the Lincoln J or A Bomb and J show. I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> I'm horrible with the titles. I'm horrible with They them. should be three random names. They shouldn't even be our names. This is Brian Brian David and and uh Aber Amber Crombie. <laughs> what's up? Or we can just have somebody else introduce it every time. Like oh you know what I need my I need like a, a Saturday Night Live announcer. That would be sweet. It's Someone Saturday night. What's that? Someone famous would be dope. Someone famous would be fucking amazing, like Ben Affleck. I'm on board with that. I am too. Oh, two against Mr. three. Mister fucking three. rolls his eyes. I would be glad to have Ben Affleck. Would you? Bro. Would you? Is that why you're rolling your eyes? It seems like a role that's fit for him. That's good. I mean, he would be good at it. That's not a lie. No, he he's good at everything. So of course he would be good at it. Except Link, being married. Are Ooh. you watching the Lego Show, Link? No, I haven't started watching it yet. I I intend to start watching it today. Jared, there's a show on TV. It's called Lego Masters. Have you heard or seen it? No. Is this? Um, I'm assuming this is on cable. <laughs> Because I don't have cable. Yes. Well, I have a Cody box. That's why I have okay. it. But it doesn't mean that it's not streaming somewhere. Sometimes on YouTube there's things. I don't know. Anyways, it's like the best show ever. They have teams of two people, and they have to, like, they have building competitions of Lego, basically. So they get themes. So, like, they'll have one where they have to, like, build a city block. And the building that they have to build can be anything. Or right. they have to build, like, the last one was movies. So they each get a genre, and then they have to build a scene out of that genre with, like, the Lego figures. And then the show, like, animates it as they describe, like, their the thing that they made. Anyways, dude, it's super wholesome. Like, everybody right. on the show is Christian. No one swears. Everyone's happy. I'm just making assumptions. But it's You're very, right. like, wholesome. But it's a good show, man. If you can how watch long has it. This been, how long has this been out for? It's I, I legit out. have never heard of it. It's still out. It's still like releasing episodes. I think the finale is in a couple weeks, to be honest. So, and this is the first season that they're on. Like this, this is new. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I'll you, check. you said it's hosted by Will Arnett, dude, and he's so good. Well, he does. Uh, Batman is that him? Batman. Okay, that that's awesome. Actually, I like yeah, that. He does Lego Batman, and then they have the producers and the director of the Lego movies like on as guests, and they get to actually like um judge uh an episode which is really sweet so mm. that's anyway, actually awesome that was a sidebar <laughs> no a dude anything we can talk about anything because it's funny i actually have a show that i discovered this week as well that i was going to recommend to you guys uh thanks to reddit actually uh it's called taskmaster yes yeah okay have you, you seen it well you you sent me an episode okay yeah okay i gotta send it to you too adam it's it's basically like a like an inoffensive jackass almost where uh, they just have the, the host, Greg Davies. He basically every season he brings on five uh, comedians or entertainers and he just gives them like the most ridiculous and stupid tasks to do. And he just rates them after. So he's, he's watching it for the first time with the audience for all the pre-recorded stuff that they did. So uh, like a, the, uh, an example would be um, draw a picture of a horse while riding a horse. Like that's how <laughs> stupid the tasks are. And I'm telling you, man, it is like, it is like the perfect binge watching show for like right now. It's, it's just super funny. The stuff they do is ridiculous. So, that's uh, awesome. you check that out. I'm gonna check out. What was Master Builders? Lego Masters. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, because Master Builders was the from the movie, right? Yeah, but they yeah. call them Master Builders like when they introduce all the like the contestants and stuff. Anyways, so right. Right. Master. Cool. But yeah, that's the. What's that? Link? Masturbators. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different channel yes different that's show. a different channel altogether yeah that's the one channel i do pay for oh of course <laughs> the masturbator channel gross. yeah don't <laughs> just grow like who wants to watch anyone do that that's just gross well clearly jared does i mean i did just admit it fucking creep yeah wait jared have you started an only fans <laughs> yet <laughs> Yeah, you sent uh, out dick pics. Didn't you send out dick pics the last time we talked? 
<laughs> no, what I wanted to know, I was trying to test the waters to see if you guys would be on board with rating my dick pics. And clearly not. I don't I need, think we I need said support, we man. wouldn't. I really don't think we didn't. We I don't think we said anything to the contrary. I just don't think you sent them. I think no, was, you guys were actually very supportive. Of course. So, which is really I'm, nice. I'm always accepting nudes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, at this, at this point, yeah, it's just like <laughs> send them over because at the end of this, can we do like a like, just like a credit sequence of like where do people where our fans can send nudes to like a P.O. box thing? <laughs> 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 yes, we have a show like we get a lot of dick, like oh. a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course we would. I wouldn't complain about it. You no, know, it'd be all. Do you think girls send pussy pics? <laughs> I wish girls sent pussy pics like guys sent out dick pics. That like would just, be awesome. You're like, just at the grocery store and you're like, what the fuck? Where did this come from? Someone's air dropping it to you. You're like, where did this come from? It's just a pussy. It's, <laughs> it's like, what's it from Super Bad? It's like, besides, have you ever seen a vagina on its own? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> oh my god. That would be awesome. Then we could have I a. Want- Go ahead. No, 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 go, 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 go. Oh, I was just gonna say. Then we can have a Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters lunchbox, treasure trove of pussy pics. Yes, that would be. I'm on board with that. I um, like how you brought Ghostbusters into that. That's the that's the actual super bad reference because he has a, it's a Ghostbuster Ghostbusters lunchbox full of dick drawings. He does. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> I don't remember that movie. Well, it was like 20 years ago. 20. Oh, yeah. It, it almost was 20 years ago. Fucking speaking of like. So it came out and it didn't come out when I was fucking 13. No, 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 no. But it was like early 2000s. Like early 2000. I, I, I would look it up, but. Um, but he's busy. Well, no, I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Super bad. 2007. So it's 13 years old. Speaking. Okay. Of, spe- you, you were 20. It's closer. It's closer to, to twenty years old than it would be to ten years old, I guess. So, exactly. Or to, to how? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, cool. One thing I was kind of thinking about the other night, um, as I was looking at my phone, I kind of thought, like, how old is the fucking iPhone? Like, it's gotta only, it's gotta be under a decade. And I fucking, no. I looked it up. It came out in two thousand and seven, and that fucking blew my mind because the realization of like, oh. Fuck yeah! It actually, the iPhone has, as of June, the iPhone has been out, has been around for thirteen fucking years. That's fucking crazy that we've had the like uh, iPhones that long. And like, for me, I've been using one phone OS for that long. Cause, me too. Yeah, because I've only, I've never had any fucking inklings like, oh, I want to get an Android. Nope. It's it's really easy to use the iPhone. There's no. Have you, Jared, what have you had? Like, um, I've almost been exclusively iPhone since it came out. Yeah. Um, I, there was like a brief stint in there where I, I made the switch to, uh, uh, one of the galaxy, like, like the S4 or something simply because my work provided me with one. Uh, and I'll tell you, like, I hated it. Yeah. Um, and this isn't to knock people who use Android, you like what you like, but I just found having been ingrained in the Apple OS for so long, it is a fairly steep learning curve going from that to the Android. Totally. And I just didn't have it long enough for me to, to fully adopt it. So I was like, as soon as I had the option to get the iPhone back, I went right back. So, so almost as you. So what, when did you get your first, did you get the, like the iPhone three GS or or three G as your first one? Like what was your first iPhone? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I was an early adopter. Like as soon as it was like available to the public, I was like, I got the first version of it. And it's been the i yeah because I don't did we have the iPhone one in Canada I think was did we well the, the iPhone yeah. one was just the iPhone three G was it not no 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 three G was the second model there was one before like the iPhone one it looked it it because the three G had that weird like curved back yeah um there was one before that that looked more like an iPod and it had like a silver back with a black thing on the top or bottom like a black rectangle. Oh man! Because I know, like I know, for me, my first one was a uh, 3G, and that would have been 
2008. So I've had an iPhone for 12 years. Yeah. At least. So would that be the iPhone 2 technically then? But well it went I it went uh oh I was oh, fuck I just looked it up. It was like iPhone then I then they they started name they named it the 3G the like the second one. Yeah, their naming schemes have always been fucking weird. And like so out of whack and so all over the place. But the three G was the second one technically. For which one did okay. you have first, Adam? Honestly, I can't remember yesterday, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure that I had the one and then I went three and then I went five. I remember okay. distinctly that I in my mind that I kept skipping a year because right. obviously back then they were kind of expensive too and yeah. So I think I had the, I'm pretty sure I had the one, but I didn't get it right away. I got it like six months after it came out yeah. and then I got the three and then I got the five and then the six and then the eight and then now the XR. Right. Yeah. I... I've never had a different phone. I can't even imagine. I hate anybody. I don't hate anybody that's strong, but the people who are pro like Android like in the lunchroom or in your workplace or wherever you are can be so fucking annoying well it's a... rarely rarely is there someone who's so pro apple that they're shoving it down your throat you know it's it's the latter-day saints of it all right like it is it's Jehovah's totally Witness. Jehovah's Witnesses. yeah like they're they're the android master race because they can do more shit with their phone and it's like <laughs> man it's a fucking phone like i don't give a fuck i want to be able to like i can pay for shit with my phone now like i, I really don't give a fuck yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, I for me like I went, <clears throat> pardon me. I had the, the first one was a three G, and then I had a four, a five, a six, six plus, or I had a yeah six plus seven, plus, and then I jumped from the seven plus to the XR. But I never had, I never opted for the S versions. No, remember either. how like yep, every either. second year they went like, oh, it's the four S or five S or whatever. Like I never opted for the S version. Even though, because it was like, well, next year there's going to be a brand, like the new, brand new one that I can potentially pick up. The Plus, my favorite phone I have ever had. The 7 Plus. The 7 Plus. Even, <laughs> seriously. Even you guys have had this conversation it. before. He, he loved that thing. I, when we worked in Fort Mac, he loved that thing. It was like. Remember when it would, it would get bent in your pocket? Because no, it was that so was, big. No, that was the 6 Plus that bent. Oh, was it? The, okay, I, my six plus bent in my pocket, and Apple replaced it. Right. Yeah, yeah. I they, remember that. Yeah, I took. I was like, my phone's fucking not working, and also for a legitimate reason. Like, the there was one day I was using my phone. It went from like forty percent battery to completely dead. Like completely like, shut off. It was dead. Plugged it in. Went jumped up to like fifty five percent. So there was something real wacky with that phone. So thankfully that happened because when I took it into Apple and was like, yo, this thing's fucked up. He ran the diagnostics and you could see on the the thing. So like I didn't really have to be like, oh, my phone's banned. It was just like, OK, here's a brand new one. But honestly, that thing was like a fucking like almost like an iPad mini. It was so big and I love it. We used to bug you. We used to joke to yep. you about how big that thing I was. Fucking, and you put an otter box on it and it's even bigger. I fucking. <laughs> Dude, honestly, it was like carrying around a tablet. Like, hello? <laughs> hello? Honestly, if you jumped from the Titanic, you could fucking live on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ro on Rose like... and Jack would have fit on my iPhone 7 in the ocean from a yeah. sinking Titanic. Um, <laughs> here's a question. So I, re I distinctly remember, like, the phone I had. I, I remember most of the cell phones I've had my entire life. I remember the phone that I had uh, right before... I got my iPhone. What was like? What was the phone you had before you? Got, I know Adam won't remember, but Jared might. Uh, it was the Razor. Oh, you had a Razor. You I had, had a razor, razor. Yeah. That long. What's that? Were razors still a thing? Like at that time? Yeah, that was like I think they had come out with like the second version of oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the the Razor was was the it phone right before the iPhone. Have you like seen was, the new one? Yeah, like the touchscreen Razor. Yeah, it's like a flip phone, and then you open it up, and it's like a full touch yeah. screen. And then on the outside, on this part, it's like a touch screen. Yeah, it's man. Pretty. It looks super cool. Yeah, it's cool. That I... was the first, like, new phone that I saw that I was like... Mm. It was like future? Yeah, like, I could be convinced. Oh, did yeah. it, like, go, like, to swing over yeah, to Android? Yeah, I think but it's... You mean, like, 
aesthetically do you mean like you were drawn to that phone or purely aesthetic yeah it was a sexy phone honestly it was yeah and like the new one looks pretty dope but i'm i'm interested to see um because it's not the first foldable uh touchscreen phone that's come out there's been a there's been a few um but i'm interested to see how a phone like that would handle like colder climates um so obviously when you come to Calgary, we have like we can hit like minus thirty or whatever. How is that like that that hinge? How is that going to handle like if if you need to open? Is that thing going to fucking freeze and you just basically you try to open? You snap your screen in half? Well, it's a, I don't know. It's like, an LCD like it's an L- it's liquid crystal display, right? So right. I have a feeling that yeah, in cold climates like this, if you try yeah. to use your phone outside, like open it up, try to fucking use it, and then go to close it, I have a feeling the middle because the screen actually folds. Right. In, in, in half. Like, I, I could totally see the screen breaking. Yeah. You, you have a very valid point there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, I'm pretty sure it was the Razer. And beyond that, I could, I had another phone before that. And I honestly, I think it was like a Nokia, some, something, um, with the T9 texting, yeah, all oh, that yeah. fun stuff. And, uh, yeah, beyond that, I, I couldn't tell you what phone I had. I'd have to see a picture of it. Yeah. To, well, yeah, that, they that had was such, the one. They had such weird fucking names, too. They did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do uh, you remember yours, Adam? Yeah, I definitely. I had a Nokia flip phone. I remember it distinctly. Because I remember the process of, like, trading that phone in mm-hmm. for the first iPhone and how big of, like, it was literally like a Nokia flip phone with, like, a blue screen. It had, like, color on the blue screen, but it was, like, honestly, it couldn't do anything. Right. And then getting an iPhone, I remember, like, just sitting in my car and being, like, this is future. <laughs> like, what, yeah. what am I doing? Like, and it was so, like, it was inherently obvious what to do, but at the same time, like, so new that, like, it was, like, it was definitely, like, a leap in, I don't know, science and technology for everyday use. Like, it was really, that's why now, look at us, we're so even talking about it, how nostalgic we are about oh, yeah. our phones and like how much they mean to us and like how much we use them and how they're a part of our like everyday life. It's pretty crazy. Man, it is how fucking crazy. They are. Yeah. Isn't it? It's like all like the, the younger generation is just growing up. They just have it. They just expect it. Like, whereas, you know, and that's, that's not a knock on like a the younger generation by any means, but yeah, we were part of the generation that like we, we it hit us right at that, at that right time yeah. where it's like, we saw that jump. I remember the same thing. Like just being like, I remember watching the keynote for it and be like, "Holy I shit!" Know. Like, what? Yeah, <laughs> a touchscreen phone. What is this fucking Minority Report? What the hell? Like, um, maybe one of the most famous keynotes ever given too. Yep. Now, in down. retrospect. Yep. I remember. I I do remember using my fucking like my iPod, having my iPod in one hand and my fucking phone in the other. And this is like probably like a couple years before the iPhone was ever announced, and being like, "Fuck, I wish these things were like, sand- <laughs> like just this one in the same, so that same I didn't have to carry yeah. both." I the phone that I had, um, it was brief, brief. I had it for maybe a year, uh, maybe not even a year before I got my iPhone. I had a BlackBerry Pearl with the stupid trackball thing that kept failing. That mm. phone is the fucking what's the fucking worst why i transitioned over to blackberry i have no idea because it was like a trendy phone at the time and pre- uh, yeah i remember that one yeah <laughs> pre and it was all bbm everybody was like bbm you're not on oh BBM. yeah give me your bbm yeah. pin what's your bbm <laughs> like that was cool the bbm thing but like overall the actual like os on the phone was so janky and shitty to use and I and yeah, I would have. Put... I had to use a Pearl once too for a job. They gave it to me as a work phone. I was a courier, and it was like my work phone. Yeah. And I had like my my iPhone, and then I had this fucking like BlackBerry Pearl, and I literally wanted to shove that thing out the window, but and I had you, to use it for work. It couldn't even like it didn't even have enough memory to hold um, oodles of like text messages or whatever. You constantly had to be deleting shit. It's an email based phone yeah. too, which I hate. I hate that. I don't want. I don't want to no. be constantly looking at my email, getting emails, typing on that fucking, like, some people love that oh, shit. Yeah. I hate it. See, I and I would have like I would have enjoyed, like, a full-size BlackBerry, like, one of the fat ones with the fucking, like, the little trackpad thing in the middle with, yeah. like, a full QWERTY keyboard. I would have I, – I still would have upgraded to the iPhone no matter what, but I still – I think 
having owned the pearl and like held an, another blackberry if i had had the money at the time i would have fucking i would have just opted for the bigger one cuz it was yeah. a it was a better phone the pearl was just there like like the introductory like to try and get the kids into it where it's like oh yeah like let's get teenagers on the pearl give them a red one a gray one a black one mm-hmm. i think I, I i used the pearl for a bit too maybe i Maybe I did switch between the iPhone because I definitely remember using it with right. the with the trackpad and like playing fucking like Brick Breaker on it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I do. <laughs> Fuck. I it's it's just mind boggling. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know where that came from. It's just mind boggling to me, like how fucking like long we've been using. Like it just feels like the shit came out five years ago. Yeah. And it's like almost a decade and a half. You know? And now it's such like an integral part of your life. Do you know what I mean? It's I feel like at any I feel like at any given time you're like almost like subconsciously aware of where your phone is. Yeah. If that makes sense. I'm like the same way with my fucking like with my AirPods. Like oh, yeah. I feel like I'm always aware of where my AirPods are. And if I don't know, I'm in panic mode. And ah. it's happened a couple times. Um but like I know, like mine are sitting like right next to me, right where they should be. <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah, you know, you can do like yeah, the weird. find my AirPod thing, right? Is there a find my AirPod? Yeah, there is. Yeah, like yeah, it's under. Is that like that's been around since the first AirPod, or that's when they brought out the second one? Well, I my AirPods. I've never looked. I've never looked have, for like an app that does that. No, no, no. I have first gen iPod uh, AirPods, and they're it's under the find my iPhone section. Any of your Apple products, as long as you have find my iPhone. Or, like, the fucking locator thing turned on. Like, you can find the shit. Okay. So, like, I, had a, I, ha- I, have, I have two pairs of AirPods, actually. I have an office pair and a home pair. And so, like, I could look at the map and be like, oh, there's my AirPods at the office downtown. You're so bougie. I know. Bougie, bougie, bougie. <laughs> I don't understand the need for two pairs. Well, Just bring them with you. <laughs> There, Work germs and home there's, germs. There, yeah, there's a whole. There's. A, I'll tell you the story later. There's a whole story behind how I wound up with two pairs. It's All a right. pretty funny story, but I'm not gonna. And tell they're both it. first gen. You don't have the second gen ones, right? Nope. The second pair is second gen. Where are you at? Yeah, I have a first pair gen or a first gen pair and a second gen pair. Moving on. Um, how is how is uh, isolation going for you guys? Have you been staying home? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm part of the few people who well, have to like I, yeah, literally go to st- work. You so, still have to work. And I can't work from home, so <laughs> no. I have to go to the airport, which is really weird. Yeah. Are but you working really still your regular like your regular hours or is it like like adjusted hours or No, I'm getting like 18 hours a week right now and there's like yeah, it's just it's really crazy. The airport's dead. Yeah. I mean, I did two flights the other day and i touched like six bags like well nobody's nobody's flying right now there are people flying but not that many and if they are they don't generally have bags so. oh i guess yeah well i guess, and that's that's a that's a good or that's a good point like most of the people that are flying would be like commuter things where they're just bringing carry on or they're being smart and not checking bags because of they don't want to a expose anyone else to them or b get exposed to somebody who could potentially have it but we were talking the other night at work and we're all like but still why are you flying uh, yeah no but you know what i mean like are you flying because of work are you flying because you're gonna go see your boyfriend or your girlfriend like i don't understand because if you're flying to see people that defeats the whole purpose it does of what we're trying to do and if you're flying because you're working then what job are you doing like yeah you know what i mean like i get it some people have to work i'm part of those people but like we were just talking we're like still why are you like why are you flying it's just it's so weird yeah it doesn't make a lot of sense but yeah but it's all good i'm not judging them i'm glad they're flying obviously it gives me a job and stuff (laughs) like that but yeah yeah anyway how's uh how's shit on your end jared (laughs) um honestly it's fucking boring. Yeah. Um, like, like I work from home. Um, so it's like, so like last weekend was a long weekend. We had Friday off and like, normally that would be like fucking sick. But then it's, you know, you just wake up on Friday. It's like, Oh, this feels like every other day before this, I just don't have to sit in my office 
during the day. Um, but uh, yeah, I keep trying to get motivated to do like home workouts, but I'm like, I know it's draining. It's like being bored is like is like draining. Yes, if that makes sense. Like, oh, we know all about that. Yeah. Remember Saturdays, like, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we were really good at like trying to keep ourselves entertained. Well, at least we knew it was coming every Saturday. Like having twelve hours of like nothing. Yeah, and then when we started like ripping through like series, like I remember when we did all the Fast and the Furious. Oh yeah. And then we did Breaking Bad because fucking I can't remember, but Buddy never saw it, so we were like, "Sweet, right. this gives us a reason to rewatch." Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't know. We watched a lot of things, but we yeah, I don't know. Lot. I don't really get, I don't really get bored. I don't know if that's like, I'm kind of like leading my regular life. That's fine. Other, other than really like just going the the biggest thing is that like work is different yes other than that i only really leave the house to go to work walk my dog get groceries i don't really like do social things anymore so it's kind of normal for me to like hang out with my dog play some video games watch some movies cook some food i've been doing lots of cooking that's going through stuff like you know i don't know so i can keep myself pretty busy that's good i i find i find like um because i've been trying to keep up with like doing this and and you know like talk talking to people and trying to connect with people more by doing this and then i i i you know have like a good week where do a bunch and then it's just like kind of take a couple days off and then i like kind of slowly sink into this like rut of like oh man like it just takes i i i'm in this weird place of like it takes so much energy to like will myself to like do things in certain instances but at the same time i'm kind of going fucking stir crazy like just being at home most of the time yeah like i've been trying and not only that like i've i've i had the the brief kind of like sanity or kind of like head clearing of like all right i'm gonna go for a drive like get in the car and go for a drive and then it keeps fucking snowing and i can't do that so then it actually keeps me in the house so in the weather? Oh man, the weather's been all over the fucking place. For like those, for Calgary's weather has just been fucking up and down. Oh, like, I know. Get it's warm, like insult to injury. Oh, it is. Like gets warm, and I mean we're at, like halfway through April now. We are fi- yeah. actually we're over the hump. We're over halfway through April, and it's like I think we're on the upswing. But I've said that three times now. <laughs> like, honestly, like we've hit like a warm day where I'm like, ah, here's the upswing, and then it fucking like starts snowing a little bit. I'm like. Ah, a little bit of snow is not too bad. And then you wake up the next morning and there's six inches of snow on everything. And you're like, well, Father Christmas is back. Yeah. But I mean, we, today looked nice. I think I've, I still haven't been outside today, but it looked nice. Oh, my window. today was really, it was like 10 degrees. Oh, shit. Oh, today it's was going to be really bad because like we think quarantining is hard now. And oh, it's I know. winter. Yeah. Wait till it's nice out. I know. And we're stuck inside. I know. And everybody, it's human nature. You're going to be like, I want to go to the lake. I want to go to the park. I want to not. No. You get to sit inside, enjoy your backyard, and have a good day. (laughs) And (laughs) and have a good day. Well, you know what I mean? Like, those are your options, man. Like, I was even stoked. I'm like, I'm off for four days. I was like, why don't I go for a drive somewhere? I'll take the dog. Let's go somewhere. And then I was like, I can't go anywhere. Banff is closed, parks are closed. Hills are closed. Pathways are closed. Sidewalks are closed. <laughs> world basically. Closed. Um, like apparently, the world put like a back in ten sign up on the door, and it was like, "Okay, just we'll be back." Yeah. <laughs> um, apparently, you can go camping though. They've not. They haven't outlawed camping. But most provincial parks are closed. So I don't know how it works. I'd have to look. Like, I have to look into it a little bit more because I'm. I might actually want to go camping just to fucking. The thing is, is like, how are you supposed like, okay, so you're like, yay, I get to go camping. But then that breeds a whole bunch of like unnecessary uh, prep work that needs to happen in order for you to go camping because you have to go out to the grocery store to get supplies to go camping. Oh, maybe you have to go to Walmart because you need propane tanks for your fucking stove. Like all of these unnecessary trips that are like potential exposure things because you're like well i'm gonna go and self-isolate camping for a couple of days it's like well is it really worth it i don't know right yeah yeah i don't know i'm gonna try and lay as low as possible for as long as possible because like i'm taking this pretty serious to be honest so 
like most people should be, I hope. So yep. I'm going to do my best, play as many video games as I can. I finished Pornhub, so <laughs> I don't know what else to do. <laughs> well, and I mean, there's a stupid amount of things to like watch and on Pornhub. Yeah, there's a stupid amount of porn. How did you finish it? <laughs> Dude, it took me like a, a bit, but I, I got through it all. He got through it in a week. Yeah. He put he put in he put in twenty hours a day on Pornhub. Proud of you. It's commitment right there. That I can is. respect that. I'm not even I'm not even grossed out about that. That's just pure respect. I That's it. fair. I thought you were gonna be like, I'm too bored to jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> well I did want to touch on that, like when you said like, you know, like your your day to day life hasn't really changed that much. I think there is truth to that as well for myself the difference is like I, I'd have to go into an office. So I was getting my social interaction every single day. Um, so like my evenings and weekends aren't much different. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a homebody myself. I'm a pretty social person, but like on my own, I'm, I can be a homebody as well. So, but the fact that now I'm stuck with, without that, even like going to the gym like that, you don't realize how much, you know, that fed into my, my need for social interaction as well. Uh, but now all of that's gone, so it's just all of it has just been like multiplied. Yeah. So um, yeah, I get that. I'm kind of lucky with the fact that I get to still go to work and have yeah social interaction, and I didn't think about that until yeah. I went it out. So didn't realize how, how important not, it was. Yeah. If I was actually laid off and at home, it, I might feel a bit different about it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yes. Fuck yeah! It's it's. It's it's a we it's weird. It's just weird. All of this. And it's super it's been difficult to navigate and, and, and like you said, Jared, like just your your normal like oh like you you would go to the gym like X amount of times a week and fucking mm -hmm. and I mean how, how long into this are we now? We're over a month that we've been Well they, yeah, they're they're home, we're, yeah, we're about a month in. Because so. I because the last I mean, in Wuhan, China, they were closed for 76 days. Yeah. They just recently opened up normal, like, metro stations and stuff like that. So, I mean, that was, like, at the epicenter of it, really. And they were closed for three months. So, I don't know. We'll see how long this sticks. It depends. Dude, I see people breaking rules all the time. Oh, yeah. I saw a whole bunch of kids at the park. I'm like, what there's, is going there's on? There's literally kids playing out on the street out in front of my house right now. <laughs> yeah, the kids at the park by my house, too. I don't know. That would be worse to be a kid during this time for sure because oh, yeah. all you want to do is be social and play. But. Oh yeah. Well, and and not having the the maturity enough to kind of be able to grasp why. Like you can't go to the park. Well, why? Well, you you can't go to the park because there's a fucking disease. Well, I can't like I don't have it. Yeah, but like why? You know, like just that sounds that. like a, the the premise for like every fucking horror movie or like zombie movie, right? Like the the like the dad like John Kaczynski having to sit down with his kids like listen we can't make any noise when we go outside it's like the same fucking shit happening right now and they it's go like, outside you can't go just... you can't touch other people why because they'll fucking kill you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's true I played the Division two right now on PS4 and that really? whole game is based on the fact that there's a virus that broke out. And has totally corrupted the whole world. And really? I'm like playing the video game and they're like, the virus this and the virus that. I'm like, this is now real life. Like, yeah. this has now become a part of our reality. Have you... Does it make you take oh. the game a bit more serious? Has it changed, like, the way you play the game? Yeah, it's like a lot. Of, I think it's a bit more serious. For he kids. socially it's distances like... himself from other characters in the game. Truth notes. I'm like, hey, yo, keep Get your distance. back the fuck up. <laughs> oh. That's uh, I haven't played that. I haven't. Is that a Tom Clancy one? Yeah. Ah, is it good? It's a fun game. Really I good. love it, man. I I'll mean, obviously games are like art. They're so subjective, but right. Like, I'm kind of a first-person shooter guy, yeah, and the game fair. has lots of like. It's about gear. I like looter shooters with yeah, gear. That's a loot shooter, kind of my thing. Sure. So. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, yeah. I I well, we talked last time about Warzone. Warzone and like. I still haven't picked it up because Krista and I both got Animal Crossing. Oh my god! <laughs> I, dude, honestly, I by um, it's fucking. Adam just leaves. Yeah, like by, <laughs> it's fucking, dude. I know. I get that it's lame, but 
it's been so relaxing playing that because it's so chill. The game is so fucking chill. You just, like, build up your island and talk to animals and fucking, I'm going to go fishing today or I'm going to hammer out, like, get collect some wood and fruit and, like... <laughs> It, it, you know, it's it's a weird form. I mean, all video games are. It's escapism, right? And it's like yes. the things that it's. We were talking about camping. It's like, well, I can't do it in real life, so let's at least imagine that I'm doing it. Yeah. You know, I built a campsite on my island, so you know. Real proud of you, man. Thank you. No, but honestly, like Krista, Krista's not a gamer at all, but she has not stopped playing this game for fucking over a week like a week and a half or something like it's cool cra- cra- i follow her instagram <laughs> oh yeah is it no. a phone game or is it an ipad no it's, game, a, or is it like a nintendo switch oh it's a switch game. yeah it's a, it's oh, a this is it's a triple a game man it's a tri- he has a yeah, console a, for it it's a first <laughs> like it's not it's even more lame than you initially thought it's an eight, it's an 84 dollar <laughs> game it's expensive no, I've, I've actually i have a couple of friends who play it as well apart from you guys and like there's there's clearly something there because like people are the people who I like they who play it like they really really enjoy it so well and uh, it's, it's expensive yeah it's a, it's a like it's a triple A title it's eighty four dollars oh, okay. for the fucking game and but, you have to buy the switch and you and you have to buy the switch so it's six hundred dollars oh yeah if you can our, our switch is still hard to come by well so what's happening is because everyone wants one so. This game came out at the perfect fucking time. Like it literally like we lost hockey on March 11th. That was the la- that was the day the NBA uh called it quits and that was the last NHL games we got. This game came out on March 13th. Like right at the beginning of like everything starting to shut down for us. So uh it's like Everybody just kind of jumped into like, all right, I'm quarantining on my fucking island. And then other people were like, oh, that actually looks kind of fun and uh, will give me something to do. So people started buying up the all the switches in the city because they either wanted one or they were fucking holding on to them to resell. So now what we're seeing is people on like the Kijiji groups and the, like the Facebook marketplace and shit like trying to sell like either brand new or used switches for like more than retail for the switch what why do i feel like animal crossing it, so animal crossing is like a new ip from this year or no i no, feel no, like no. i've heard of that game oh no no or, they had one for the wii they had one for gamecube okay they have wii so what is it about this one that's that's making it so popular like is it just the fact that it's on the switch like why is it it's just it's because it's the brand new one Oh, okay. Like it's the. So it's next... always been a fairly popular game. Yeah, it's always. Been, I mean, like the last one they put out, because like I've never, I've never played one before. I've never played an Animal Crossing game before, mm. but um, during the, so when the Wii U was out before the Switch came out, they released an Animal Crossing game, and that was during the Amiibo craze. So they okay. released a whole bunch of Amiibos for this Animal Crossing game. And the game fucking tanked because it like you needed to have these amiibos in order to fucking do anything. I guess people weren't super happy with the game, and I don't know. I I didn't. I looked into it briefly. I never had it. Never played it. But with this one, um, this one was more like kind of I guess mm, higher concept. I I don't know. I don't know why it's because like I said, I've never played one before. So I I'm just I'm really enjoying it though. Like it's super. Like I said, yeah. I. I can log on a couple times a day, do my shit, and then just like go on with my day, and it makes me happy for five minutes. It seems like a more advanced form of like remember like the Tamagotchi thing, like the virtual pet. Yeah, yeah. This seems like a like a expanded version of that. Where you're are you? Are you gonna watch anime while you do it too? Oh yeah, anime all the day, like hentai, <laughs> hentai all day, all the day, <laughs> all the day. Um, no, it's, it's I, so I would, far from my world. I wouldn't say it's like a tam- Tamagotchi. It's more like it's like mm, a more cartoonish Minecraft that's like less uh, open world. Like, because in Minecraft you can just fucking do whatever you want, whereas in Animal Crossing it's like you're still crafting tools and like. Oh, okay. Mining. I thought you were just raising animals, no, which is no, why no, I no. made the comparison. No, I no, no. I thought you were just trying to cross a road and there's a bunch of animals and it was like Frogger. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, we get it. You're 900 years old, 
and you grew up in the yeah. That's what I thought the game was. No. I'm not hating. I'm just saying. No, no, no. I'm listening. No, I so I've been playing that, and then I've been playing NHL 20 as well, online with people. Which fucking EA man, their their fucking servers are absolute trash. Because I had to fucking like in order to be able to play online, I had to log into my fucking EA account on my Xbox. But in order to do that, they have to send you a verification code. It's not just simple as like plugging in your password anymore. It's like the two step verification bullshit. So you hit the like send me a code thing and to to my email and then I sit there and wait for the email. Half an hour later, the code shows up and I plug the code in and it goes, The code's invalid. Well, then you try it again. Half an hour like it just their fucking system is I think so bogged down that it fucking it honestly took me five hours to get logged into my EA account so I could play online. Just stupid. Stupid. Crazy. First world problems. That's crazy, yeah. What are you? Are you still playing? What do you play with, uh, on EA? You, you're playing NHL like 2K or not 2K? What is the what's the newest NHL one? 20. 20. NHL uh, 20. I um. I haven't played. I haven't played um like an NHL game in so long. But I remember speaking of uh, we were talking about like the shift in in like um, technology and stuff. Do you remember when they introduced the skill stick for NHL? Yes. And like that, like blew my mind. I'm like, this is so fucking intuitive. Game changer. Because like, before, I remember, I'm pretty sure it was like up. I think you had to maybe hit like L1 and a button or something to like to, it, to like, like deke or something. Well, you can you can change your controls back to like the old style. The classic where you settings, just hit yeah. like A to shoot, and it's like it feels wrong. Yeah. It does. You can't go back once you once you understand that tactile response. Like you can't go back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. um but uh, I, yeah, I haven't played a hockey game in a while. I should I should grab one actually. Those games are actually pretty fun. Well, it, yeah, just yeah. I mean, you can get everything digital now. Like it's, it's yeah. You should well, you should wait. Are you Xbox or PS4? I am Xbox. I historically I've been PS4, but now I'm I have an Xbox. You should please get NHL 20. Is it crossplay? I have Xbox. Well, you have both. You have both. Don't I you? have yeah. I have well, yeah. I have Xbox and PS4. He has two AirPods too, so he has both. I'm just gonna assume Lincoln has two of everything. <laughs> just assume he has everything. Okay, no. He does. What color was your second Mustang? <laughs> <laughs> what about your first Lamborghini? Okay, <laughs> blue and yellow. But the only reason I actually got a PS4 is because they released that camo edition one with Call of Duty World War One, <laughs> and I really wanted the camo PS4, so I was like, well, I guess I'm getting a PS4. I mean, that's a legitimate reason. It is. Why not? It is. Why is everything not? else in my life not camo? I want. Did I? I told you I wanted to camo wrap my car, right? <laughs> did I tell you that? No. I told Adam that, but I, I don't know if I told Jared. You're talking about your truck. No. You don't no. want to do that. No, I wanted, you wanted to camo wrap your Mustang. Yeah, I wanted to camo wrap the Mustang because I thought it would be amazing. I told him it would I mean, look I good can't... if it was the pink camo. <laughs> The pink and gray and black. Dude, picture it. Just like you wouldn't be able to see me on the road at all. <laughs> cops <laughs> cops wouldn't know where I am. Just boom. Try gone. and find me. Try and find me. <laughs> I'm on Deerfoot, but where? <laughs> <laughs> I just see taillights. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd cover those too so they couldn't see me. Whoa. <laughs> Camo taillights. That's awesome. Um, Funny. Yeah. Uh, I, I legitimately, I, I don't know if I'll wrap this car, but maybe in the future, if, uh, I have the money, I will wrap, I will camel wrap a car one day for sure. Okay. Cause the way you had the sentence, the way you said that sentence made it sound like you have wrapped a car no, before. No, 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 no. Oh, I okay. wouldn't personally do it. I would have some. You would do. You would do your. Oh no! no sorry. No, no, no. It just made it sound like you you you've had a vehicle where you've done that. You've had that process done. No. Because you're like I. Okay. Yeah. No. No. No, no. 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 The Lamborghinis and the Mustangs are not wrapped yet. Do you need to? Do you know this? You probably don't know the answer to the question, but if you do wrap your car, do you have to change the registration on it to 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 reflect the the new color? I don't know. 
I don't know. You're the one fucking talking about it. I don't see you research this. <laughs> no, I had a good idea. Don't you have a Honda Civic, Jared? What car yes. do you have? Yeah, he has a Honda. What's up? You should get the, You should get a wrap on your car of the new Honda Civic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I just can I just take a quick moment here? A quick pause from our sponsor. Krista wanted to inform me. Animal Crossing is the cuter version of Age of Empires, if you know oh. what that is. Lincoln didn't explain it right. Oh, I explained Whoa. it poorly. Thanks, Krista. I thought my Thanks, Minecraft ex- expl- explanation was pretty dope. <laughs> Wow! You it wrong, Wait, is she? she did she? Else. And you're I gonna love, have to answer to that once we <laughs> once we're gone. <laughs> well, and I love the fact. Okay, can I also point out that instead of texting me, she texted <laughs> you. <laughs> I didn't want to bring that up. Would, like nobody questioned why his wife's texting me. <laughs> she knows you wouldn't check it. That's why Jerry. Would My check phone's it. right in front of me. Of yeah, but course. you wouldn't check it. For no, her. you're right. I wouldn't. I'd I'd look and <laughs> we're see. We're all in it. trouble. I would look and see it's her, and then just fucking toss it aside, <laughs> and say, "Go back to your Animal Crossings. Go back to your horses." Yeah, and she your... doesn't text. You. Yeah, it's it's probably good because she would have uh, like physical evidence of you ignoring her text. Wait, did Krishna play Age of Empires? Like she? Oh, oh okay. She probably... You know what? I don't know, but I'll find out Actually, in a couple she minutes. Might have... <laughs> she might. Yeah, I... no. Why? Wow, she's gonna fucking. <laughs> she's gonna be like, "Yes, I did play Age of Empires." And it's going to go to him and not me. Her Fuck voice it. was so perfect. The one I just did. <laughs> Age of Empires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about we get her to introduce our next show? I know she's she's dying to be on. It's uh, the, the Lincoln cool and Bob and, and Jay show. Hey, you cool cats and kittens. Hey, hey all you cool cats. <laughs> Carol and kittens. Baskin. That bitch, Carol Baskin. Did you guys watch episode seven? Okay, this is, yeah. The, the, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this first. Yes, I did. Did you? Okay. I did. Wait, yeah, no. What like, do you mean? When you say episode seven, were, were there six originally? Now there's a seventh one. Yeah, there's a new episode. I didn't even know that. So no, I haven't released, watched it yet. It was okay. released on Sunday this past Sunday. Yeah. Okay, I definitely haven't seen it. Well, you... from what I hear, it's like a follow up wait, episode. Have, so they... Wait, have both of you not watched it? I haven't watched it. Oh, no. it's it's all. So all it is is Joel McHale. Um interviewing different uh people from the documentary that's all it is and he's like pe- people were like yeah it's not like an actual episode hey did you know that that woman that got her arm ripped off was is actually a trans man yes i didn't know that yeah and there was like a whole big controversy thing about are you texting krista he is look at the smirk on his fucking face he is he's no. throwing you under the bus right now i know he is no no, no. It was. I swear to God, it wasn't. I swear. And now this person's gonna know that that's who I was texting. It's fine. We're good. It's his girlfriend, Aaron. Remember? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Cancun. I do love Aaron. Cancun. Um. I want to bring. Yeah. I'm gonna ne- next time. Maybe not. Well, not next time. Sometime in the future, I'm just gonna have me and Aaron sitting together here, and you can talk to both of us, and we can explain the journey of our love. Okay. That's good. <laughs> and Link is just like, okay. It's like the dumbest shit I've ever heard. And I'm like super excited about it, but uh, whatever. So excited. What was – oh, fucking – At least I know the proper explanation for Animal Crossing now. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, <laughs> um, the fucking – yeah, seventh episode uh, was kind of not what we had been hoping for. A, a, a lot of people in the tiger king community but in what um, way like you wanted more closure or you wanted like no we just thought there was going to be more documentary footage and there wasn't it was all Uh-oh. it was literally all brand new like um like exactly what we're doing now that's what it looked like right okay joel is on his couch and then these people were like at their place just talking to him over facetime that's all gotcha. it was which cool. is fine like you got some answers to and and it's funny because like Netflix produced this new episode and like put it out to like kind of answer to the the all the people that are like craving more about this and then I think he asks every single person that he interviews he's like did you like how you were portrayed in the in the documentary and I think most of them are like if not all of them are like nope didn't like how I was portrayed in the do- uh-huh. like none of them like the documentary <laughs> Which is something we kind of touched on last podcast was kind of like how they 
portrayed them afterwards yeah in, in such like weird locations shirt off yeah. sitting by a dumpster like just weird stuff i will say that uh what was that guy's name john or whatever the one the, one, the husband or whatever? yeah the one husband i will say his interview was like really good because you get to see what you get to see like a totally different side of him where he's like he doesn't look like a fucking you know like he doesn't look like a dumb hillbilly he looks like yeah. a human being so yeah. like i kind of i appreciated the fact because he and joel even asked him like did you like how you were you were portrayed in that and he was like no like it was fucking they made me look stupid yeah which is totally true yeah that's fair um yeah fucking yeah tiger i mean at this point like they're all bad people and oh and he also you'll just watch it it's fucking just watch it okay uh, we I can br- talk about it next podcast because we'll watch it by then yeah exactly got some homework yeah there you go um, I will. adam I yes. want to because we we haven't really. I mean, we I still have a a few episodes of of get food to like cut through and stuff like that. But I wanted to. Have you seen these? Yes. Chocolate covered nutter bars. I haven't had them, but I saw them. Okay, I'm gonna try them on camera right now. Okay. For both of you. This feels wrong. Feels very wrong. Why? Because <laughs> I feel like you shouldn't. But I. But wanna, I also want to see it. Have you seen the new Oreo flavor? No, what's the new Oreo flavor? What's the new Oreo flavor? <laughs> tiramisu. What? Tiramisu. No. Yep. Okay. I wonder if that that would what taste like coffee? Tiramisu is very coffee. Coffee. Yeah, coffee. Okay. okay. Uh, before you take a bite into that, Krista did so play Age of Empires on PC. Well, wow. good for her. Did so. Good for her. No, I know nothing. (laughs) I can't wait to invite you guys to the divorce party. Um, All right. At least you have enough rooms in your house. We can all move in. Oh, I know. It's going to be incredible (laughs) once she moves out. So this is this is Nutter Butters dipped in chocolate, and we really because these are the same like fudge dipped. They're like the Oreos, the fudge dipped Oreos, but. Oh yeah, it like froze right as you did. <laughs> There's a screenshot for the for the podcast. Chocolate and peanut butter. It's amazing. What could go wrong? I can't wait to eat that entire box tonight. Where'd you Love get it. them? Um, pretty sure I seen those at Superstore. Yeah, I think I got them at Save On Foods. I'm not really sure. They're, Speaking um, of chocolate, oh sorry, finish no, your sentence. No, you Here's go, you go ahead because I, 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 was transitioning into something else. But you go ahead, Jerry. Okay. Uh, speaking of like chocolate and peanut butter, uh, what I find is like a, a difficult uh, cookie to find. It's the, uh, it's I think it's called Dad's like wagon wheels. Do you know what I'm talking about? The they're kind of like they're ones? like really soft texture colored. Um, I can like maybe sometimes at superstore I can find them. Like, I don't, is it like a seasonal item or something? Like I. I feel super lucky when I find them. It's like caramel and coconut and like chocolate drizzled on it. Yes, yeah, they're super so good. good. They're yeah, so okay. good. Just you know, yeah. Um, Adam's just like, he's just. Like, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm glad you guys are having fun. No, no, no. He knows. <laughs> oh, he knows Dad's cookies. I know oh, yeah, he yeah, does. Yeah. He's Love aware. That. So make your transition. Well, I was going to say, speaking of Save On and grocery stores. There was a thing – so you've clearly seen the advertisements that Sobeys has put out where they're, like, touting um, – we're giving our employees hero pay, and they're, like, paying their employees more for kind of being on the front lines uh, during this pandemic and stuff like that. Have you not? Like, do you know what I'm talking about, Jared? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or, I, know- I actually have uh, first-hand knowledge of that. Yeah. Uh, I know somebody who works for um, – Wait, it's I don't know if it's just Sobeys though, because the person that I know works for is Safeway. Well, it's the same. Well, Sobeys owns same Safeway company. now. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, so if that's the case. Uh, this person is making, I think, five hundred extra dollars like a week because they're considered an essential employee and they're customer facing. So it's almost like hazard pay. Yes. So yeah. That's that's cool that 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 person um, is making that. However. Sobeys is advertising that they're doing this. 
And then I saw on, I think it was Crack Max, that somebody anonym, anonymously posted that it's the corporate stores that have implemented this. And so okay. what that means is that the franchise stores um, aren't held to that obligation. They can choose whether or not to pay their empl- their, mo- their employees more. So what's happening is that there's only like a certain amount of stores that have actually implemented this like hero pay thing. Whereas there's certain franchises that aren't actually paying their employees more. So it's just another example of like super misleading advertising in my opinion, where like, cause I talked about this with somebody um, previously where I, we were both kind of like talking about how like, Oh, like good for them. Like, that's great that they're they're providing more for their employees that are out there on the front line and, and doing this stuff. And that's great that your friend's making that. But I think it kind of feels almost – it feels kind of shitty now because it's like, well, I, f- I, I, I feel kind of gross about it because it's like, you know, it's it's not it, – things aren't always what they, they seem, I guess. I don't know. I mean, good for her, though. Well, good for her, but, like, I don't know, like, are they wrong for, like, to me, are they wrong for kind of patting themselves on the back, even though it's not, you know what I mean? Like, do they really need I get to... what you're saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, I, like, at... I mean, you still kind of have to advertise in times like this, and if you're going to, like, use the pandemic and the fact that, like, you treat your people good and that you treat them extra good when shit's bad... I mean, that could motivate people to shop at your store over fucking Jimmy Johnson's co-op store or whatever, where they don't give a fuck. Right, but you know my, what I mean? my point so, being that, like, it's misleading. But yeah, have they had... Welcome to the world. Yeah. Man. Sobeys had... Have they had to do a bunch of layoffs, too? Did they? No, I'm I'm, ask, I think I'm asking because, like, what they... They, they did. I don't think... I mean, I, don't, I haven't heard of any grocer laying people off because I no. think that they are making money hand over fist right now yeah they are making more money now than they probably have ever made in their entire existence as a company well think about all of the fucking spoiled food and expired food and all that shit that they've over the years had to throw out shit like product that they they have to get rid of because it's expired or whatever Whereas right now, people are literally clearing shelves. They don't have that problem. They The problem they have is they don't have enough people to fill the shelves. So Adam's right. They are making money hand over fist right now. Two weeks ago, I went – I was looking for just like snacks for the house, and I really wanted – I I like peanut, uh, peanut M&Ms. Right. I had to go to three different stores to find them. Peanut M&Ms. That's crazy. And that is a problem too because you shouldn't – like you shouldn't be going to multiple stores to like, you know what I, and I'm not saying that's like on you, but it's, it it is. And it's not like, it's like, yeah, you couldn't find what you're, you're looking for, but it's like, we're just in this weird spot of like, well, fuck do I, and I, and I've, I, I've, I've fallen to that too, where I'm like, I couldn't find what I was looking for at the one store. And it's like, I've actually had this like inner battle of like, well, do I keep looking? And like yeah. potentially expose myself to more places, or do I fucking just give up and go home? Well, it's just it's just a byproduct of like the hoarding aspect of it because like I've never in the history of my life struggled to find. Oh, I know. Almost like any kind of grocery item, except for those dad's cookies, apparently. <laughs> um, but you know, like peanut butter, like for peanut M and M's, it's like it's just clear that like like milk or something or like. You know, pro- produce I can understand being like just taken off the shelves because like, but like when it comes when when the candy's disappearing, yeah. it's like you just you just know people are just like oh fuck like I don't know what I'm gonna. <laughs> Did like I uh, you know which what? is funny because we're telling people to stay home so it makes sense to stockpile but leave some peanut M and M's for me. Yeah, no, I I fully One, agree with it's you. It's a snack pack, man. Like the so. the most sobering moment I had in this whole was like really early on where. Um, I, I, it's not that I wasn't taking it serious at first. It was just kind of like this, oh, like this isn't going to last as long as I think. Like I was kind of in denial about how long we were going to be stuck in our house. So I kind of, I, the, the one time I went out to the grocery store, like I grabbed a couple things. I didn't really like, 
I didn't grab a whole bunch of stuff, but the store was like fully stocked and it wasn't busy. And like, this was early on. And then once things started to kind of like pop off, it was like, Oh, I guess I need to go to the store and kind of grab a few more things. So we're not left without food for the next like week. And I got to the grocery store, walked in and like, it's like Jared said, I've never seen, um, like the meat aisle was empty. The yeah. milk was empty. There thankfully was still eggs. There was thankfully still bacon. Like there were still little pockets of things here and there, but like it was so fucking weird. Just, it, it looked like it was in a, like it felt like I was in a movie because there yeah. was people running around with like carts full of shit. And I'm like, what the fuck are we going to eat? Everything's empty. So I just like grabbed a few things and like that kind of kicked off this like initial like panic attack moment for me where like I got home and I was like, I, I don't know how, like, I don't know what next week is going to look like. Are we going to have food? Like, is that when you bought four packs of bacon that Krista posted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Was... Well, I was in the hunt for bacon. I love that. That was awesome. So I, told my friends about I really, I've, I've gone to Costco now. I've, I've gone to Costco and I really like how they're operating. I don't know if you guys have been to Costco lately. <laughs> But I I've really, been to Costco in a while. I, I, oh, but I've seen on my friends' social media how they're like making everyone line up, yeah. and you can't blah blah blah. Like, yeah, it sucks that you have to line up, but I really like how they're just keeping everything fucking orderly, and they're not letting people go in and like panic buy everything anymore. They're they're yeah, they're just allowing a certain amount of people in the store at one time, right? They're like only, they, they're pulling pulling back and then yeah, it's like fifty, and then they lit they literally have people at the doors with like those count those baseball counter things, yeah, and yeah. they're counting. As people leave, they're, like, counting how many leave, and then they call <laughs> over to the front door, and they yeah. let, like, ten more people in. And it's, dude, yeah. honestly the best Costco shopping experience I've ever had in my life. Oh, like, I can imagine. Because it's, like... Are there samples still? No, there's no fucking samples. <laughs> Fuck, no. But it's it's actually been incredible, because it's like, okay, I can go in. I don't have to fucking fight through, like, 300 people to get what I want. There's only I can't I can't recollect a single enjoyable Costco trip in my life. I've had one before this. I've had you one. What my mind keeps thinking. Like the world literally needed to be ending for you to for me to enjoy going to Costco. A hundred a hundred percent. Sorry, Adam. What were you saying? You know, I keep thinking like my mind keeps thinking about like, are there going to be Costco samples again? Am I going to be able to go to a movie again? Am I going to be able to, like, do all these things that we all used to do? Like, is there going to be – are there going to be music festivals again? Like, are we ever going to get out of this to where Back to we can do things that are even semi-normal? Like, yeah. I just don't know, man. I just I'm, – I'm always wondering, like, if our, is the world going to be the same as it was before? It, it It's going to be – well, dude, like, we're living <laughs> – Remember, remember nine eleven. Like, oh, you're getting real. And I don't mean that in like a jokey way at all. I mean like, fucking, it's like you're gonna remember the time and where you were, yeah. what was happening when, yeah, I, yeah. I agree with that. It's totally. it's it's literally three thirteen. I have it yeah. tattooed on my arm. Three thirteen, and my oh, I don't know where I'm pointing that. Three thirteen. Man, I miss tattoos. I want to get tattooed. I know. Like. I know, and like, dude, think about this. Like, think about how many, how many artists, and how many like, like, well, tattoo artists, musicians, like, how many people that like make money off their art are going to get fucking wrecked because of this? People who own, t- like, we know so many people that own tattoo shops that, like, dude, fifty percent of them might not exist by the time this is over because they can't fucking afford. To like keep their shop alive while we're all getting fucked in the ass by COVID. Yeah, you, you just did uh you just did one with Miles Khan, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Like yeah. not too long ago. I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to be watching it. Oh, but fuck like, I'm, I'm, no, I'm I'm a, what, what was uh? I'm assuming that's something you guys talked about as well, like how it's affecting. Yeah, him. like well, we yeah we we touched on it briefly, and like I didn't I didn't want to talk talk about COVID too too much. Too much. Yeah. In, yeah. The, in that, you know interview. what? I'm just gonna watch it. Yeah, just watch it. I mean, like, we don't do... spoil it for me, man. I'm that... so jealous of the fact that you know that guy. He's such a wicked tattoo artist. Yeah. He's... Holy shit. He's he's a good. When dude. you found, when you told me, I'm like, wait, 
the Mouse Con, the guy that I've been following for years on Instagram. Fuck you. I think it, and it's so funny because I don't. I, I, we're I, supposed to be there right now. I know we were lit. Dude, we're we, supposed to be there right now. We were supposed to leave three days ago. Yeah, we were supposed to leave for Victoria three days ago. No, I, I, it's so funny that like, cause I've known Miles for five years now, something like that, and so like I don't view it from that through that lens at all. He's just my friend, but like no, other sure people did. that are like, you fucking know, I'm just like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm and sure I Brad love- Pitt has non-celebrity friends who are just used to the fact that they know Brad Pitt. <laughs> oh, you're uh, Brad? Yes, I know Brad. <laughs> Oh, you mean Ben? Yes, I am a friend of Ben. Fair enough. Um, oh, Joaquin? Yeah. Oh, I know Joaquin. Joaquin. I, I love think, that you're um, freaking out about Miles, but you're not freaking out about the band guy that he did the t- interview with. No, yeah. I did that already. You got that freak out already. Oh, you got, I know. You saw the whole thing wait, on you, text. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah, right, right. Did right, you right. watch that interview, Jared? I caught, like, about a half an hour, oh, but I got to finish it, though. fuck's sakes. God, Dude, I, I, literally, man, I work. I do and a, then when I'm not I working, do, I play Call of Duty. Yeah, I do a show with the guy, and he won't even watch the content that I make. Do you know what? Okay, here's the thing. Can I? I, I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing. I hopped on, and then I went onto the onto the live chat, and I made a comment that I thought was so fucking <laughs> brilliant, and you didn't respond to it. That he did. Did I let him introduce himself? What is the first uh, line from Up in Smoke? Yeah. Did you see what I called the episode? Isn't it just with Mike Bro? No, I called no on Spotify and iTunes. I called it. So let me introduce myself. <laughs> dot dot dot. Now that okay, you yes, I okay, that. I get your fucking joke now. Ha ha ha. Yes, I get it. No, it's and, not as at the funny time, now. No, when you're mad about it. <laughs> no, I was. I'm not mad about it. I at the time I like looked at the chat because I was like, <laughs> dude, I was so nervous for that chat. Like on it, it went so well. Yeah, that's one of the best fucking like. I don't know you, you don't know me, like, let's have a video chat interview. Like, that went so fucking well. And I, at the time, I, like, I did see your comment, and I looked at the chat, and I read it, and I was like, fuck you, Jared. Like, why would I let him? I just introduced him. Like, I don't get it. So, at the time, I didn't get it, but that was my nervousness playing into it. Yes, now that you've explained the joke, it's hilarious. Thank you. You're welcome. And I will give you props for that. That is a really funny joke. And I wish <laughs> I, I wish I had gotten it at the time. All right. But, I'm just sitting here like, I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. But it's all good. No, that, all good. that was a really What fu- they were talking about? What him and Mike Fro were talking about? No, like about? what the joke means. It's all good. Oh, okay. It's all good. Um. No, the, the, um? I, I wanted to transition into a, a, a I don't know how, how long you guys plan on, on doing this for, but I had, I had a completely off topic question I wanted to ask you Please guys. Please do. So for some context for this, um, I used to be a store manager for Bench. Okay. Kind of like the Lululemon competitor, I guess. Um, I don't even know if Bench is still a company anymore. It doesn't matter. It was a pretty slow store. Um, I was at Market Mall and then. I got into the habit of anytime like a, a customer would walk in, um, you know, I do my usual, hey, welcome to Bench, can I help you out, whatever. Give them a few minutes. Um, and then I kind of circle back to them, I'm like, hey, can I ask you a question? And uh, most of the time to be sure, I'm like, have you ever seen a ghost? Or have you ever experienced anything that you believe to have been supernatural? Um, you know, the question gets balked out a lot. But what was interesting, though, is I would say a good four out of five encounters with people, they always had they, they had a story, whether it was them or it was like, oh, not me, but my grandma or like my cousin or whatever, um, which I thought was very interesting because like I I'm not like a I'm like, I 100% believe in ghosts or the, the supernatural. I'm open to it and I'm very interested. But the fact that there was such a consistent response, I'm like, OK, well, what is that? Is that just us experiencing something we don't understand when we're younger? Um, and so it's just an interesting question for me because I find I guarantee – I shouldn't say I guarantee, but I feel like one of you at least has a story. Okay. So Do you? Uh, like a, a supernatural story? Ba- okay, so the question is like, okay, have you ever seen a ghost or just experienced anything that you just couldn't explain you thought might have been supernatural? Um that's really what it is, but the the just the, like the the actual question is: Have you ever seen a ghost? Uh, I can't say that I have. 
What about you, Adam? You have? Okay, I want to hear this story because this I'm... is my point. This is exactly yeah. my point. Yeah, you right? Okay, tell us please tell me your story. Tell us your story. Okay, this is like a really weird story and the weirder the I'm better, man. Ner- I'm like I have like I have goosebumps right now and I feel really weird. This is what like, I'm talking about. I don't tell like a lot of people this story. I actually told my family this story for the first time like 2 years ago at a dinner and it just like came up and they were like it's not like insane, but it is really weird. But I'll tell it's you. Not going to make is. you uncomfortable. Uh, did I put you no, on no, the spot no, no, here? No, no. I don't, okay. No, no, okay. it's fine. I was camping. This was like a. This was in like 2004. I was camping long weekend in cellar with my friends. We were. So at we were like camp. 30. Shut up. And so we were camping long weekend, and we were like, "Should we go home on the on the Sunday? Not go home. Go home. Not go home." We were like humming and hawing all day about it. We couldn't decide. And we're like, no, we'll just stay and then we'll leave Monday. And then at the last second, like at like 930 at night, we're like, fuck it, let's just drive home. And like, it was just random. So we pack up the car, we leave. It's like getting dark out. And for some reason, we start talking about like on our way from Stettler to Red Deer, we start talking about like aliens and like alien movies. And like, I've always been interested in aliens. Like when I was 14, I did a science project on alien abduction and, like, I always watched, like, Fire in the Sky. I was always so fascinated yep. with, like, our communion. Have you seen Communion? No. Oh, my God. Anyway. What is that? One of the scariest alien movies based on a real-life story I've ever it's seen. It's a movie. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to write that down. Anyways, so I've always been fascinated with aliens. So we're talking about aliens, and I'm describing to her, my friend, Jen, is in the car. I'm in the back seat, and our friend, Amy, is in the front seat. And so we're just driving, and, like, I'm describing the movie to them, and we get onto the highway, and it's, like, really busy traffic. It's, like, rush hour, everyone's traveling long weekend. Wait, is it, sorry, is this during the day or at night? This is at night, 9.30 at night, 10.30 okay. probably. I'm and just trying to... Long weekend in, in August, so okay. it's summer. Yeah, yeah. So we're driving along, and, like, I'm in the backseat of this little tiny K car, <laughs> this big fat me, and I'm just driving along. And I see this, like, really bright light in the sky, like, up in front of us. And it was, like, really bright white. Like, it was really weird how, the, like, there's different colors and shades of white. And this was, like, a pure white. Anyway, so I'm, like, staring at this in the backseat for a long time while we're driving. And while we're driving, I'm, like, it's not moving. Like, the, the light in the sky isn't moving at all. It's staying stationary, I can tell, because, like, we've been moving and it's staying stationary. So I'm, like, huh. So I said something, I'm like, yo, have, did you guys notice that light in the sky? And they're like, no. And so I'm like, well, I've been watching it for a while. I don't think it's moving. And so they're like, oh, okay. So as we're approaching it, we keep like, I'm staring at the light and I'm like, it's not moving like at all. Like as we're getting closer and closer to it. And like, I'm starting to get kind of like freaked out. But at the same time, I'm like, we were just talking about aliens. Like maybe this is all like, it's in my mind. I'm looking for it. I don't know. So... Mm. As we're approaching it, and it's like literally we're about to drive underneath it, it shuts off its lights. And like I'm in the backseat of the car, and so I like lean out the window, and I'm like looking up, and I can see the outline of it from the sky, from it looking down. And I can see that it is cigar shaped. So it's shaped like a long tube, and there's like no wings, no propellers, no nothing. And so as I'm staring at it, lights turn on onto the bottom and they start going around in different like patterns. And I'm like, it's a fucking UFO. I start freaking out. I'm like, it's a UFO. I'm like, Jen, pull the car over. Jen, pull the car over. And she's like, no. So she starts driving faster. And I'm like, pull the car over. I want to see it. And so she starts freaking out and she starts driving faster. So now we're on the highway. She's literally doing like 150 kilometers an hour. I can't take my eyes off this thing at all. She's seeing the same thing. She's just as terrified. Right, okay. Yeah, she's terrified. I'm curious. So I'm like, I want to get out. I want to see this thing. She's like, pedal to the metal in the fast lane. And then all of a sudden I notice there's no traffic. There's no traffic on the number two highway. Or is it the number one from Edmonton to Calgary? I can't remember. Number two. Yeah, the number two. There's no traffic. There's no cars in front Mm -hmm. of us. 
no cars behind us, and no cars in the other side. This is long weekend. We just entered the highway, and it's full traffic. And I'm like, there's no vehicles. Anyways, so I'm now out looking out the back seat of the car at the UFO, which is just sitting there. So it's just sitting there, and, and then all of a sudden I hear Amy in the front seat make a weird noise. And I'm like, I turn and look, and as I look, there are... 25 deer on the highway 25 deer on the highway like a pack of deer in the middle of and the so highway in the very middle of the highway and amy was like ah oh, and i look and i so i brace myself in the back seat because i'm like i'm gonna die we're gonna die we go through the pack of deer meaning the car drives through the pack and nothing happens what I can't, I can't describe to you it any in any other way than like you know when headlights hit animal eyes and yeah, they yeah, glow yeah. back they didn't glow back so the headlights from the cars were flashing on these deer which looked like weird deer cow hybrids mm -hmm. they weren't like typical deer they were like if a deer and a cow had a baby and it was like really weird and their eyes were black because I remember that the headlights hit the deer. I'm calling them deer in quotations. Right. And their eyes were black. And then we drove through them. As we drove through them, I looked out the back window, and there was nothing there. And you all, all three of you saw the same thing. Yeah, we all experienced the same thing. I'm irritated that this isn't the first story you ever told me when you met me. <laughs> this should be your introduction to everybody. That's that story was like way crazier than I than I anticipated. Wow. So Is it done? I'm screaming. Okay. <laughs> stop the car. And Jen is screaming, fuck you, no. So she's driving even faster. We're doing like 7 million miles an hour. I don't even know. Holy so I'm shit. looking out the back window after all this, and I'm like staring at the UFO, and I see the UFO turn its light on, and it goes straight up and disappears. Like not fast, pretty slow, goes straight up, disappears. So I'm like, okay, so we're freaking out in the car all the way from Red Deer to Airdrie. We're just freaking out. Like, oh, my God, what were those deer? I can't imagine. I thought we were going to die. Why didn't you stop the car? Jen's freaking out. We're approaching Airdrie, and I see the same light Fuck. on the, on the right-hand side right by Airdrie. And I knew it the second I saw it. I knew it instantly. I'm like, that's the same light. So same thing as we approach it, just as we drive under it, the light shuts off. I can see the outline of it above Airdrie. It's a cigar-shaped. It turns its lights on, and Jen just drove. Nothing happened. No deer, no nothing. We just drove into Calgary. We all slept in the same bed because we were scared. We thought we were going to get alien abducted. <laughs> but yeah, that's, so, that's my story of what happened. So I guess as a result of that now, are you – what? No, nothing. It's just – it's weird to retell the story because I know how weird it sounds. Yeah. Or it could sound to somebody – but I can't stress to you enough how real it was. Oh, I, which I, seems I to be a recurring you. thing, right? It's yeah. like, dude, like I was there and I saw it. So I guess as a result of that now, are you like, did you believe in aliens before? But now yeah. it's just kind of solidified that? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously something. So, I mean, yeah, I would say that I, I was a believer wanting to believe before, but having experienced something makes me even more of a believer for sure. But I'm very like, I've always been that way. I believe in Sasquatch. I believe in Ogopogo. I believe like I'm kind of gullible in that, not gullible, but like I'm into that kind of stuff. I watch. Oh, I am too. Shows. Like I watch yeah. ghost shows. Like I love that kind of stuff, man. Yeah. I, like I want to believe that there's some mystery, you know, in, in, in the world. You know what I mean? Maybe not to the point where I'm like, yeah, Sasquatch is, is, you know, is real, but like, why not? Why couldn't it be? Why couldn't there be something out there that we just don't understand? Why couldn't there be some kind of fucking Leviathan in the middle, in the, in the middle of the ocean that we haven't experienced? Like we can't even get down there. Right. You know? Um, yeah. I, I want to believe all that stuff too. And I, I just, it's, I don't know. I think it's like one of those things that just kind of makes me still feel young at heart to kind of believe almost like I believe in magic. It's like, no, I want there to be something I don't understand something, some kind of mystery in the universe. Um, I, I believe in aliens too. Uh, I think I think you'd have to be pretty narrow-minded to not believe that there's something in the universe be, uh, outside of us. Um, 
I haven't been sold on the fact that that we've been visited by aliens, but now having met someone who you know has clearly seen something fairly compelling and uh, oh, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's what cool. do you think? Um, if we were to uh, be, if we were to have ever have like a first encounter with aliens, I feel like I'm hijacking this, Lincoln. I'm no, sorry. no, 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 please. This is honestly like fascinating as fuck, and I. I cannot believe this is where this went, and I'm so happy. Please go. Okay, good, good, good. Um, if we were to have an encounter like with with aliens or another species or whatever, what do you think um, their physical being would look like? Like, what do you think that it would be like your typical like alien, like you know, like the big eye, big head, big forehead, tiny mouth, um, or like what do you? I'll, I'll tell you what my Star opinion. Trek fan? Or any of you guys Star Trek fans? I know it's, everyone loves Star Wars, but like, no one at Trekkie here. I fucking love Star Trek. Come on. I I, you know what? I do. I don't. I I'm not like religiously addicted to it, but like I do like Star Trek. There there are definitely some aspects about it that I'm that I fucking love. I mean, I've heard a scientist say that like. I don't know. I think there's a lot of like, obviously it depends on the world that you come from, what it's made up of, blah, blah, blah. But they said the general ingredients for uh, like an organism to be able to grow and survive as far as we know would have to be within certain scientific elements, meaning not extreme gravity, which we're lucky to live in, not extreme gravity, which would make us like either really or would make us really short. You know, yeah. so I have a feeling that scientists think that most beings would look similar esque to us, but in science fiction, I've always been drawn to the things that are weird and don't like, like the planet that's alive. Do you know what I mean? Right. Not so much like a being, but like, or not so much like a species, but like something that's crazy, huge, old. They have a couple episodes in Star Trek where they encounter like very ancient science, um, like space entities, and they're like these full encompassing planets or like big nebula or something and i've always been drawn to things like that but i don't know it's hard to say man you would hope that they look something like us but who knows? i would yeah i would assume i mean that they would be some sort of some form of almost like artificial intelligence almost like like like, a, like i want to say almost like robotic in a sense like a century because like we're obviously we we are not conditioned for space travel as it is so anything that's going to be traveling across across the uh, across the galaxy is going to have to have adapted for that, right? You know, any kind of long term. So I, if anything, I think if we were to be in contact, it would probably be some kind of like, like a literal like probe or like a sentry that's just literally here to make contact because they can't reach us. But I don't know. It's a very it's something that you talk about forever. You know what I mean? It's such an interesting idea, and to think that you know, part like I I grew up uh, I grew up Christian. And I'm not really, uh, I'm not a, a practicing Christian anymore, but I can pinpoint the moment where I kind of, for lack of a better word, lost my faith. There's a, there's a photo of, um, it's called like the Hubble deep field photo, I think. Yeah. I have to um, let my dog in. I'm sorry. You what's that? I have to let my dog in. I'm sorry, but keep talking. Oh, it's all right. Um, uh, so there's a, there's a photo of the, the Hubble deep, uh, field photo <laughs> that uh, I had seen that, uh, um, Basically, I saw that, and in the photo, it's all these different colors, right? And, yep. and the colors are not planets or stars. They're actually full-on galaxies. And it was in that moment that I was like, uh, you know what? Like, how am I supposed to believe in, a, in, a, in like, a god that's bigger than, than all of that? Right. You know, and I think that's what I, that's what I struggle with. And that's literally what we can see. And that's just like a pinprick in the sky looking in one direction. And we can see hundreds of full-on galaxies, or hundreds of, like, Milky Way galaxies. Like, you know, yeah. we're at the tail end of the Milky Way. That's all that is. And um, yeah, I don't know. I struggle I'm, with that. I'm looking right. at it right now. It's You're looking at the photo now? I'm, I, I just looked up the photo, and it's, it is, I, I, it, it's anxiety-inducing. Right? It is. It's fucking terrifying. And, and man, uh, I am in a similar boat with you on that where it's like, how could, like, we aren't the center of the universe at all. Yeah. And there's, it's, it's an, to me, it's an impossibility that we are also alone in this universe. Like, there, right. it's, it, it's impossible. How, yeah. 
could there be that much space and that much shit out there and not have any other kind of life? That doesn't make yeah, any yeah, sense yeah. to me. So pretty selfish. It's pretty selfish. It is a very selfish way of thinking where it's like we uh, as human beings, we there there's a lot of us that feel like the world revolves around us and it's or like the universe revolves around us and it's just not the case and i feel like hopefully this pandemic helps uh, wake us up from that oh a little bit. i definitely well and it's kind of funny because i saw somebody point out the fact that like um they're like <laughs> they're like aliens are probably already here and this is the reason they're not telling us because everyone freaks the fuck out and people would it's true i mean you look at something like you know even us dealing with this COVID thing like you know we we came up with like a clear set of like precautions that you can be taking. Yeah. And there's a large portion of the of the population who's I shouldn't say a large portion, but there's a decent amount of the, of the population who just are not adhering to it. And and you know like this is they're like oh it doesn't really affect me I'm young or whatever but like it's it's serious and you should be like you saw those videos of those like uh, those uh, spring breakers just out in Florida who were just like I don't give a fuck like I. COVID, I don't, you yeah, know. Yeah, I'm not letting COVID you know, you're take go home and, like, kill your grandparents because you Yeah, did you hear it. that? Kid came home, infected, and then his grandpa got infected and died. What? He went to spring break, yeah. Unbelievable, right? Yeah. So, you know, this is something, you know, real world, we're experiencing it right now. Could you imagine telling the, the human population that we've come oh. in contact with fucking aliens? By the way, Area 51 exists and aliens are real. Yeah, no, I dude, I, no, I think, I think, I think a lot of, uh, I, I think a lot of people would absolutely fucking, myself included, like, I don't, like, how, how would we process that information? That'd be really, right? that would be really, really, really hard to process right now. I agree. I, again, coming from, like, the, the, the church and, like, uh, uh, like, a Christian background, I'd, I'd always wondered, you know, how would that impact just the religion yes. in general? If we had concrete evidence of any kind of any, even if it's like microbial life, do you know what You're I mean? Like as soon as we find like, any, we got to rewrite the Bible. We got to rewrite this shit. got to rewrite fucking, the Bible again. <laughs> it would be rad because then all the Mormons would be like, or no, not the the Scientologists would be like, Scientologists, like, we're right. Oh, we're not the Christian we're, we're aliens. right. Oh. <laughs> it was aliens. Oh, like, but Mormonism has something to do with aliens too. I think. Well, Mormons school. Mormons get their own planet when they fucking die or something. Like, depending on how good they were. Yeah, but there's something religion, about man. aliens in there too. I probably. Remember, yeah. Joseph Smith was an alien. Yeah, and he saw. He said an alien came to him in the middle of the night oh, or yeah. some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So weird. Yeah, yeah. Which could be true. Who knows? But did you ever watch hearing your story, man? Huh? I'm starting to, uh, after hearing Adam's story, like maybe, maybe the Mormons are onto something. You know, Jared, there's a show you should watch that I used to watch. That's a paranormal show, and it would be they would take like real stories and then reenact them. And I know there's like a million, million of those shows, but this yeah. one was really good, and it was like well done shot, and the people that they chose had really good stories. Um, it was called Paranormal Witness, and I know it oh, had five. Like, yeah, yeah. It had five seasons, and like obviously not every single episode is amazing, but there are some re dude. There's an episode in there about fucking werewolf, not fucking werewolves, but there's an episode in there about werewolves. This family experienced the most insane night. With I've mm. never heard a werewolf story in my life. Have you ever heard? Yeah, a werewolf me neither. Story? Yeah, yeah. Like a real like, hey, mom and dad were camping and we got like surrounded by these werewolves. No, I've never heard a story like that. Dude, you should watch some of the episodes in there. Are they on YouTube or like it's where a, is, is somebody streaming them? It's a sci-fi yeah, show. Yeah, I'm streaming them. Dude, you should get an, 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 a, a Cody box. Cody box? Yeah, I mean, I should do that because uh, I feel like I'm limiting myself, you know? There's just a lot. The thing, the good thing about Cody is that you can access shows on Hulu, Amazon, all these right. different streaming services and not have to pay for them. It's stealing. Oh, no. oh yo, I think – no, you can watch – I'm looking at the sci-fi website. You can watch uh, every episode of Parano Paranormal Witness. Oh, free? I think I think they have it up for COVID. 
Oh no. Dude, there's some no. really good, really good episodes in all those seasons, man. You yeah, should keep that okay, I'll be check- I think that's Paranormal Witness, right? Is what you said? Yeah. yeah okay, Paranormal I'll check that Witness. out. Um it might is that, be just is that an show American still thing. running or it's there it was it's it's done. Okay. Dude, um I was I wish that show would come back just because of how well they did it. Right. Okay. I'll it check look, that out. 100%. The, the fucking photos look unreal. Okay. Yeah, like you might even like it just for some of the stuff and how they shot it, like horror well, wise. I, I, I really I, want you to do a horror movie. Please, can we do a horror movie? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I want to do a horror movie yeah. so bad with you. I think yes. it'd be well, so and that, and Jared, Well, Jared, it's funny because Jared and I were talking about that. Uh, not ex- that long ago. Not that long ago, where I was like, we should write a script, and he was like, yeah, I kind of really want to write a horror, and I was like. <laughs> I want to write a drama. <laughs> you want to write a horror. I want to write a horror. <laughs> no, I would like to write a drama. Who oh went to God. screenwriting? Can you guys please do that. No, it'll be the like the three of us. I think we should we should brainstorm on that. Not on on air, but like we should brainstorm that and fucking because I th- I I I would fucking love to. I have always wanted to make a horror movie, but for whatever yeah. reason, in that moment, I was like, no, let's make it. And right now is the time to fucking make horror movies because, um. There's like tons of empty locations and not a lot of people around and like, like shit like that. So it's it's yeah. now's the time to you know socially distance together and make a film, six feet apart. Yeah, which um, also leads me to another thing because uh, with the um, we're talking about ghosts and everything, um, just an idea for a potential video for us. I like I threw a friend of a friend I know somebody who kind of runs like the the ghost tour out in Canmore. Okay. Uh, so potential video idea here is that uh well we have the opportunity hopefully when when the settles down however long it takes we should all just go out there and make it make an episode of that because i, I mean it seems so like cool. we're all kind of open to that idea and like it could either be really fucking hilarious or it could be real like just you know just a really cool experience i don't know which way it'll go um i think it'll be really up. hilarious because i'll be terrified the whole time yeah absolutely i will be terrified but the whole time. i think that'd be great I'd be totally down to do that. Oh, okay. Speaking of fucking ghost stories and um, shit like that, uh, one movie I, because like obviously being at home, like we there's a lot of new movies out and stuff like that. I watched a couple nights ago. I watched Doctor Sleep. Oh, with yeah, how was Ewan it? McGregor, which is I guess the sequel to The Shining. Yep. I watched the I watched the director's cut. I didn't watch the theatrical cut. So it's three hours long. Okay. It's fucking amazing. Oh wow! Is it now? Right. I know. I I, I did. I buried that the lead was on not that. Not where I thought you were going to nope, go with that. I buried the lead on that. It's incredible, and I I had absolutely. Are you zero. a Shining fan? Yes, I love The Shining, and okay. I had absolutely. I'm also okay. So the guy who made the movie, Mike Flanagan, is the guy that made the. Uh, haunting of hill house thank you haunting of hill house that yep. have you watched that show dude that's the reason i was going to wa- i was interested in watching dr sleep because in my opinion He's mike flanagan like, has not had any is shitty that's movie. Ne- and, is that a netflix show yeah haunting yeah of haunting hill of hill house. house yeah dude have you dude adam no but like 10 people have told me to watch that show and i haven't watched holy it. fuck watch it I, it's, i'll watch it okay i've it's never i've never seen a like a tv series actually be fucking terrifying that shit not, is... not only that but able to keep up that tension over 10 oh episodes oh my god dude right? it's fucking unreal I so mean... that is the reason why i was like okay i'm gonna get the same thing mike flanagan that's the reason because i've seen hush hush is a good movie yep I've seen the haunting of hill house i haven't seen the other stephen king stuff he's done because he did another one on netflix he did uh, Gerald's Game. That's – was that – that's a Stephen King. It was, it was enjoyable. Like, it wasn't like – you know, it wasn't – you know, we didn't knock it out of the park, but it was definitely – it's definitely worth watching. Okay. Yep. So, be, well, based purely on Hush and The Haunting of Hill House, I was like, all right, I will give Dr. Sleep a chance. And then that fucking – like, their, their, their next round of, like, advertising came out for it where it was really heavily Kubrick – like the music and like they were really playing up the fact that like we're going back to the overlook. That's kind of how I felt the first trailer to be that I saw for the Doctor Sleep or whatever it's called. What's it called? Doctor Sleep. 
yeah, just Dr. Dr. Sleep. Yeah, yeah. What, I was the over, was the overlook very, in the? Oh, I guess I, it was. Because he like looks through the crack in the door, just like it felt very like Kubrick esque, sort of, and like I was well, I just like, I, I mean Kubrick esque in terms of like they're literally borrowing parts from the original Shining movie that Stephen King didn't like, and they're this is like they're Mike Flanagan made a direct sequel to the Shining movie. I don't know how closely it relates to the book because I haven't read the book, but. Mm. The fucking movie holds up. Like there Is was, it? there was not a point in that. Like and it, and it. Another friend of mine said when we posted on Facebook, he 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 said that it like it walks this tight line of like, of, kind of, being the sequel to Shining while The Shining while also being its own thing, and like yeah. directly pulling from the Kubrick references from the original movie and like using like rebuilding those sets and being in those locations and stuff like that, but also is like so much its own thing. And like, you're almost kind of like, um, it's not scary in, in the least at all. Like it's not scary, but it's, it's fucking, it's fun to walk <clears throat> like for the, the, the overlook and stuff like that. It's really fun to watch. Cause you're like, fuck like they they recreated the shit out of this yeah. but then on top of that you're like okay but like the story's compelling enough and ewan mcgregor is fucking kills it is the part that. of the story the fact that he's the little boy from the yeah first so he's playing up? he's playing a, a, an older so that's what the book is about like stephen king wrote a sequel to the shining like it wasn't even that long ago within the last five years yeah, yeah. it's a grown-up danny torrance um dealing with uh, just trying to live his life and he's like you know and stuff like that so it it, it starts out that way and then obviously but I know it's like he has powers and then the little girl has powers yes. and then they gotta like use the powers yep. together to yep. defeat the whatever's happening yep. it looks like they're in a bad acid trip kind of kind of yeah but <laughs> honestly uh, my suggestion if you're gonna watch it find the director's cut and watch that because I you said I, it was three hours long it's three hours long like it's three hours on the dot. I you think. got nothing but time, Jer. You got nothing. True. But, but the thing, and I don't, because I don't know what was cut. I don't know how long the theatrical cut is. The theatrical run was. One it's thing I can say about sixty minutes. Uh, about Mike Flanagan, like the, you were talking, like Haunting of Hill House, obviously was sold sold uh, a lot of people on on that, but. Um, he actually, do you remember they made uh, this really shitty kind of teen horror movie, Ouija? Okay, yeah. I never yeah, saw based it. Yeah, on, on Ouija boards. I've seen it because I, I, I try to watch as many horror movies as I can. Um, that movie sucked. And then a couple years later, they released a sequel just, that was just Ouija 2, uh, Origin of Evil. Oh, yeah, okay. that and that was the one that Mike Flanagan That's directed. Mike Flanagan. That movie had literally no right to be as, as good of a horror movie as it was. No. If you were – Link, I don't know if you're still on your computer there, but, like, if you want to pull up the, the, the Rotten Tomato score for the first one versus the second one, it's crazy. Like, for a movie that didn't even deserve a sequel for how shitty it was, I don't know who greenlit <laughs> – like, who greenlit the sequel to this if Mike Flanagan, like, presents, like, hey, like, I got a really good idea that we could, we could oh. do a prequel for. Okay, yeah. So, we, Ouija, the first one, has 6% tomato meter and 24% audience score. Audience score, yeah. And then what was the second one called? Sorry, it's, it, I'm origin. pretty sure it's Ouija too, but Origin of Evil is the uh, subtitle or whatever. Okay, but. Origin of Evil, Rotten Tomatoes. Oh wow! Oh wow! Holy shit! It's certified fresh, 83 percent. The audience score is really low though, 57 percent. Yeah, it's the same thing with like A24 movies, right? Because that's the difference. Is like Mike Flanagan, he's 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 more about like like tension and like he's not just like jump scares in your face which i think which what I, that, I that's why i like him because i don't like jump exactly scares. yeah like i think you know it's it's aimed at like teenagers to go and like cuddle in theaters and stuff but it's not it doesn't have that same kind of effect no which is which is probably why we thought i mean i thought the first one was garbage because it's just relying on like something just jumping out of the out of the shadows at you when this one is just more like it just squeezes that tension in the room, and you don't always get that payoff. And that's you know worse. What I mean? like which that... is what I love in in like what A twenty four does with their horror movies, um, where you know it's it's just more well, about that's... like evil, con like 
like concepts and like your your brain will do a better job of making it scarier yeah. than anything they, they can put on the screen. Yeah. And I think when a director can that harness was like that. like the magic of Blair Witch kind of is that yeah. you didn't have exactly. an entity. It was your imagination that was creating the monster. Yeah. Because as soon as you see it, you you as soon as you see whatever this like being or monster is, you've immediately split your audience. Because some people are going to be like, whoa, that was terrifying. And some people are going to be like, like whatever. It's fucking lame. It's like the, yeah. Clover, the Cloverfield monster thing. Like Cloverfield right. was a great movie up until they showed the monster. Because as, as soon as they show the monster, you're like, Oh, okay. That's that's what it was. Oh, that's kind of cool. But I do. Uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I just this is really quickly. I do miss that kind of um, uh, that secretive like I wouldn't call it guerrilla marketing, but like when J.J. Abrams like he knew how to fucking advertise a movie. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you remember the trailers for Cloverfield when it came out? And see, he did the same thing with Super Eight. Um, they're all these really like cryptic, like just enough to get you in. Like oh, he he understands the definition of a teaser. Where he's not like. Just go see this movie or like Cloverfield Lane. Oh, when ten, ten. Okay, oh, the shit. ten Cloverfield Lane. Like yeah, the, ten Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. The advertising for that was fucking rad because like initial nobody knew that there was a sequel to Cloverfield made. It yeah. just came out of fucking nowhere and it was like, oh, uh, what is it? John Goodman and fuck, like it just kind of showed them in the basement and all this shit happening. Yeah, and, and that movie like rumbling I, outside or something. Yeah, and like I love that movie. I. People were pissed about that movie because it was like, yes, it's a sequel to the movie, but it doesn't – it's not the exact same thing that the mm -hmm. first one was. It's like a totally different story set in the Cl Cloverfield universe where they're in a bunker and, like, it's more about, yeah. like, the human aspect of, like – it's more about kind of, like, if you really equate it to what we're going through now, like, I'm sure there's people in bunkers that are like, everyone upstairs is dead and, like, COVID's got them all and – seriously – no, I bet, you, I bet you that's fine because it's true, man. Like it's it's such a it's a bonkers time. Like I I agree. Um, Domestic violence is up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good place to end this. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, but really, like I'm reading reports that like people are like, man, you got to spend time with your significant others. Like, did you did you see that video of uh the, the, like with Trump at the press conference, like, oh, he's like, domestic violence has gone up. And Trump's like, Mexican violence? He's like, domestic violence. Like, oh. <laughs> no, I did not no, see that, but I funny. totally fucking believe it. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my oh, yeah, God. No, you're right. I I think people were split on that movie, too, because, like, with the with the ending reveal, which if anyone's watching who hasn't seen it, well, I guess they know it's Cloverfield related, but I'll still give them that courtesy. With the ending, um, I think some people felt it was kind of tacked on. Right. But at the same time, I think if you're going to go for it and you want to have, like, a lasting impact, like, just make it fucking wild, man. Which is, like, why, like, uh, Cabin in the Woods is another great example. I fucking love that movie. Do you know that like movie blindsided me? Right? Do you like it, though, because... Adam? Yeah. It yeah, okay, great. good. I liked it. I they liked introduced it a such a, like, a... As a concept, but, like, it was a great... It was so well done, but it blindsided me because I didn't know that that's where it was going. Yeah exactly they they bring you like they introduce such like a a wild concept like they tell you how it's basically how it's gonna end like this is what will happen if this goes south and you're like nah and then at the end it's like fuck you that's how this is ending <laughs> i'll i'll never forget the first time i fucking watched that movie like right. i it that movie was like polarizing in so many good ways Right, because it just... I love how tongue in cheek it was, but it somehow was able to like, like point out all like the the cliches of horror movies, but still do it so well that it, yes. it was still effective. Oh yeah, you know, being so self aware. Oh yeah, and um, it used like all those classic the things that usually throw me off from a horror movie, and they used it in such a good, smart, funny, intellectual, well written way that yeah. it worked. Yeah, like they did such yeah. a good job on the movie. I agree, and they made it. There's. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say they made it on the weekends while they were making Avengers. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. Really? Seriously? Oh, because yeah, Hemsworth is in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hemsworth, Hemsworth is in it. Joss Whedon produced it, and like they were literally they they would work on this is from what I understand they would work on um like Avengers during the week and then like they would work on that on the weekends. 
Because that, that project was shelved for a while, I'm pretty sure. Cabin in the Woods? I, I don't know. That's, I can believe that, though. I'm sure they definitely had their, like, I, I it was probably either to, like, start with, they were probably working on it for the weekends while Avengers was shooting, and then eventually they kind of moved into their own, because, sh- like, it's still a full-on movie. Like, there's no, they wouldn't have, it would have taken them a fucking a full year of, like, you know, 50 di- 52 different, like, shoot weekends to finish mm-hmm. that movie yeah just a heads up my phone might die soon that's fine we're i mean we're <laughs> we're oh, we're almost at two hours so like we'll we'll cut it okay. soon anyway but what are you gonna say good, Jared? Good. not trying to rush i got 20 percent, so we're still oh good. yeah we're golden um okay well then i do have another question about that um so you were talking about like you know you saw that in the i'm assuming you saw a cabin in, in the woods in theaters no no. no, you didn't? Okay. Lincoln, did you? No. no. Okay, I, okay, I did. And, like... I, I wasn't did. smart enough to go watch it in the I, theater. I wish I, I wish I had... Dude, I totally... That that was one movie that I panned on for whatever fucking reason. Like, it just... And yeah. it wasn't until, like, a friend of mine whose movie taste um, that I really... Her and I have the same kind of taste in movies. She was, like... I think, like, I hadn't seen her in, like, months... And then, like, we were at a party or whatever, and the first thing she said to me that night was, have you seen Cabin in the Woods? <laughs> and I said, no. And she said, go fucking watch Cabin in the Woods right now. And so I think... At the party? No, I well, I think I was there for a couple hours, and I was like, I'm kind of like... I. I think I watched it that night, though. But anyway, go on, Jared. You, you saw it in theaters. Oh, yeah, um... So I, I saw that in theaters and I remember it being such like a genuinely positive uh, theater going experience where, you know, uh, I was lucky enough that the audience I saw with, saw with was really into it. Right. Uh, but what was like the 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 most memorable movie going experience, like theater experience for you? Um, I have a I have a couple that I can quickly just say uh, as far as like just being like holy shit like, this actually shocked me red state kevin kevin smith's movie i was probably one of maybe 10 people who saw that movie in theaters wait what theater did you see it at uh i want to say sunridge was sunridge the only theater that was playing it probably i okay, remember like we, seeking it out like it was like we prob- it was, it was hard for me to find it but for some reason they were showing it no i um, you know what i no i I'll I'll I have to one up you on the red state because I saw red state with at the globe downtown with Kevin Smith in attendance and he did a and a after that's that was how I saw red state sorry <laughs> you know what I think you actually told me that we've yeah, talked about that before yeah. that's 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 fucking awesome it was rad. Um, we also need to have another podcast just purely on tusk because fuck that movie <laughs> in Wait, the you... best way possible I love that movie okay good um uh yeah, so Red State, as far as, like, a, just kind of, a, like, a unique movie-going experience. But as far as, like, uh, like when I'm asking this question, I mean, like, where the audience was just so into it. Right. Um, so, for me, it's actually Borat. Do you remember, like, Sasha yeah. Baron Cohen's oh, Borat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I saw that in theaters, and it was a packed crowd. And, like, I did, like everything in that movie landed, at like, at the time. Like, the, the audience was just howling and i just remember it being such like a, a fun experience at the, i don't know how well that movie was held up probably because like wow yeah probably not that well because at the time everything was like super offensive but now it's just like that's yeah. just america we've kind of it's kind of yeah. we realize that's just america this isn't funny anymore you know <laughs> um but uh, yeah for me it was borat and also the hangover the first hangover was oh. like a really really good movie going experience where everyone was just fully sold on the concept of it and really enjoying it um, I don't know if you guys had if there was a movie where you you saw it and like everyone was just sold on the on it and like had a good time. What about? Or what, it could be a horror movie where everyone was affected by it. But. What about you, Adam? I mean, I can't remember shit about fuck, but the two that I can remember is definitely like the first Jackass movie. I won tickets to that movie that's the only time i've ever won tickets to a movie on a radio show yeah back in the day i won tickets to the premiere of that show of the movie and dude like you talk about the audience eating it up like that 
I thought we were going to burn that theater down, man. Like, <laughs> it got everyone riled up so much, and everyone was into every single scene. Right. And, like, I remember looking over and seeing people, like, dying laughing. Um, yeah. But in the opposite of that, in that aspect, is uh, the ki- the first Kill Bill movie. Like, I've never been in an audience where an audience was more in tune to that movie. Like, when that when the credits started rolling for the beginning of that movie, that place went from loud to silent mm. in one millisecond. Like, as soon as those credits started, or that opening scene, like the <clears throat> classic Tarantino, you know, people were into that movie in every single minute. So, I mean, those two are the top off my mind that I can think of, but... But yeah, I love, man, I miss going to movies. Like, yeah. having that experience, like, you know, sometimes it's annoying and it sucks, but even just talking about it makes me miss it. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, um, well, one of the ones I was going to say was, like, any of the Jackass movies. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I think I saw, I didn't see the first one in theaters. I was too young, I think. But I saw the second and third one mm-hmm. yep. in theaters. They all, were all the same, though, I'm yeah. sure, on oh. the premiere. It's oh, or yeah. even in the first um, few. One fucking... Actually, this kind of tags up with what Adam was saying. Um, like, opening night of Inglorious Bastards. Yes. Every single person in the theater is, like, on the same fucking level. Because everyone that is there... And that, like, really... Like, for certain movies, like, opening night is the is the, is the night to go. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, like Inglorious Bastards was fucking great because, like, we we all experienced this like, because that that movie's so fucking good. We all experienced this so brand good. new like the fucking, the the scene where Hitler's getting his face, shot yeah, riddled with bullets. Yeah, yeah. The audience was screaming at the screen. We were all screaming at the screen because we were laughing and cheering and like fuck yes. Like we cannot, we couldn't, it, it was, it was just this like fantastical, like you can't believe what you're seeing kind of thing. Yeah. Um, another good one for opening night and audience reaction was the dark night. Yep. That one was incredible because there, from the time Heath Ledger had died, um, there was so much speculation as to like, Holy fuck. Like, they, they pretty immediately were like, no, he shot all his scenes. Like, he finished his part on the movie. But it was, like, this this crazy speculation of, like, well, did it kill him? Did the role kill him? And, like, all this stuff. So, you know, based on the trailers and stuff, like, we had a we had a somewhat of an idea of, like, what we were kind of walking into. But we didn't really know until the credits rolled on that one. And that, that movie, like, everybody was, was really... I will props to marketing for that movie. I mean, I've never gone to a movie and then watched the first five minutes of the opening sequence of another movie that I wanted to watch that wasn't a trailer. Do you remember when they would... So you, I went to a movie before The Dark Knight came out, okay. and they had a preview for The oh, Dark Knight, yes. yeah, yeah, which yeah. was the opening sequence yeah, of the... them robbing the bank. Yes. And yeah. you're like, this movie is going to be unlike any movie yeah. I've ever seen before in my life. Yeah. It, it knew yeah. right away. Yeah, it's it interesting. Goes... There are certain movies, and I was going to say Inglorious Bastards is one of them, but I'm glad you brought up The Dark Knight, uh, where just the trailer comes out, and you just know, like, that's going to be a solid movie. Like, there's no like there's no way this is going to be a bad movie. Yeah. Inglorious Bastards was one of them for me, um, where you see the trailer, I'm like, nope, that's just going to be fucking awesome. Like, everything about that concept, everyone who's in it, that's going to be a good movie and the dark Knight, like um as well like I, it was interesting because i think even when i saw it in theaters um you kind of feel like you're witnessing like cinematic history yeah. like the movie does it holds up so well and I, I probably watch the dark Knight at least twice a year ever since it's come out um but I, I just go back and revisit it um and then i i know there's been conversations about whether or not Heath Ledger is as good. Like, do we do we put Heath Ledger's performance on a pedestal? Because we all went into that movie kind of emotionally primed, yeah. if that makes sense. Because he'd already passed away. Um, but no, that dude, he fucking dead or alive, him. he fucking nailed yeah, that. He won the Oscar. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't even think that that was like a pity Oscar. Like, yo, you're dead, no. and we kind of feel bad, so here it is. It was like I think everybody, everyone knew that he deserved that Oscar for his role. For oh sure. yeah. I mean, you just have to look at Jared Leto trying to take it on to see how how nuanced of a performance it is. 
You know what and I mean? He's an amazing actor. He's, he's a great a, actor, and he can not pull it up. No, yeah. well, and and I and you can't. The thing with Jared Leto is you can't fully chalk that up to like mistakes. It's not like, fully him. You're no, right. No mistakes You're right. were made all around with him. Like David, the whole the whole concept <laughs> of the character, <laughs> the hand tattoo. Oh, like, oh like, man. Just so, but you know, and then it and then it comes down to like, all right, like you know, Joaquin tries he won the fucking oscar too did you know so it, 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 there there is a, I, what oh i was just gonna i'm gonna get a little bit more introspective we don't have to talk about it but the question that i i asked myself about that is when he won for heath ledger won for joker okay cool uh and then joaquin wins for joker as well yeah i'm i'm wondering i'm wondering like what does that say about us as a society where we are we enjoy roles like that so much that we give a role like that so much respect like why are we giving joe like a character like the joker a pedestal it's the same reason trump is president no you're right i'm it's not the ex- it's i get it yeah yeah because we're 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 uh what is it masochists or sadists we're 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 drawn to that chaos yeah. like oh it's weird and then yeah you're right it's kind of the like, same same thing yeah Joker's a pretty complex character i think like He's got so many different layers to him. Generally, if you play him in a good way, I think like it's tough to find a character or to build a character like that in a movie from nowhere. Like, oh, this is just John the neighbor, and he's fucking insane. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, the people know about Joker; they know kind of a little bit about the history. But to play a character like that and to play it well and believable, I yeah. think That's... maybe is what more is what we're holding to standard than yeah. the actual movie itself. Yeah, maybe uh, sir... more the rule. More role. more intelligent people would do that, but there's people out yeah. there that idolize that fucking chaos and mentality in the I think where where the new Joker succeeded though, in my opinion, is how well Todd Phillips and, and Joaquin Phoenix playing him was able to get the audience for a large portion of the movie to empathize with him. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The entire movie, like you you already know you're going to see the Joker movie. You already know where the trajectory of where the movie's going. Of course. But every step of the way, as he's getting beat down and beat down and beat down, you're like, fuck, like, just give this guy a fucking break. Yeah. You know, you're hoping that he can find some kind of salvation or resolution to this, but you just know you're going on this dark path with him. Um, but the entire time, you're just like, you're rooting for him, right? Yeah. Um, so which is what I think what made that movie so impactful and why people loved it. You know, it's, uh, I think they saw you know a lot of american like just like the struggles of like yeah and i feel like it's a lot of that is reflected back on the american people and the just people in general where they're like oh they can kind of see themselves in the mental health of it all and the and Mm -hmm. the chaos and the being beaten down of it all so they you're right that's where the empathy comes in and you that and that's why um that character gets idolized because they're like well fuck like why doesn't somebody rise up in reality and yeah, he's just kind of like a, like a, what's the word? Yeah, like if I, if, you know, everyone kind of like dreams that they can be that guy to rise up and like make a difference, but like obviously he just went about it. Oh, he makes a big fuck. difference. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he just had the balls to do it. Like, he had, you know, had nothing to lose, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I love that scene, man. Oh, I know. The, the end of that movie is fucking tight. And I... That should have been, in my opinion, where they ended it. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Just that shot, right end there. the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. But, like, on that note, I think this is where we should end this. I agree. You like that transition? Everybody, uh, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks for, you know, doing this and actually showing up this time, Jared. Hey, thanks for um, letting me do something. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Well, and we'll we'll do it. We'll do another one next week. And um, I'm gonna. I'm thinking about Jared. This is why I want I'm you. Here. I'm. Uh, this is why I want you to get NHL 20 because I'm thinking about streaming, um, a Stanley Cup playoffs on NHL. So it'd be sick if you came on and if you got it, then we could play together. Okay, I'll play as the Leafs so that way we actually lose in the first round for sure. No, no. So it'll be you play Eastern teams. I play Western teams. Okay, and then we'll, I'm down for that. We'll or or you pick any or you can just pick one team and play through your the eastern side, and I'll pick my team and play through the western side, and then hopefully we okay meet up. Yeah, in the I'm final. down. With that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's fucking do that. 
All right, I love you guys. I'm going to transition us out. Okay. Thank you Make so sure much. to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment. You got to start saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We love Push you Push that bell. Push that bell so you get notifications every time we go live. Thank you so much for watching. For Lincoln, Thanks, guys. A-Bomb, and Jay, I'm Lincoln. I'm Jay. I'm A-Bomb. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.